Welcome back to the What's Next After Cancer Treatment Ends webinar. This is part two. I'm Paula Holland Along. I am a 20-year breast cancer survivor, a professional speaker, and I'm here to talk to you guys today about how you can take kind of the black hole that cancer creates in your life and it just takes over when you're diagnosed, how you can transform your life back to being your life with cancer just being a part of who you are. Really glad that you're with us today, and if you haven't done part one, you might want to go back and do it so you'll be ready to and up to speed for the rest of what we're going to do here today. Part one was entitled, Normal's Not Normal Anymore, and I talked about the emotions and the changes that happen unexpectedly when we think we're going to go back to normal when our cancer treatment ends, and sometimes normal just doesn't fit anymore. So today, I'm going to build on that by giving you guys the three essential steps that create the best possible what's next for your life. So, let's talk about it. After 20 years as a survivor and working with thousands of cancer patients around the world, I have learned that the essential steps for having the best possible life after cancer treatment, the first step is resonance. The second step, permission, and the third step, action. If you can get resonance, permission, and action going for you in your life, you're going to be really well prepared to create a fabulous new normal life for yourself. So let's start with resonance. Some of you may be wondering what that is. Um, it was a concept that I wasn't really familiar with, but it's come to be the guiding light of my life. So I'm going to, instead of telling you, I'm going to demonstrate for you. <coughs> I'm going to advance the screen and there are going to be about 15 different photographs on there. I'm going to give you about five to eight seconds to look at those photographs and pick the one that stands out to you the most. You get to pick one of those photos and pretend that you could pick it up and take it home with you. So here they are. So take a few moments to look at these pictures. Try to just kind of feel the one that jumps out at you. and not using your head, but just going, I really like that one. Pick the one that's meant to be yours. Pretend that you're just going to pick it off the screen and take it home with you. Which of these pictures resonates with you the most? Have you picked one? Congratulations! You've just used resonance. Way to go! Resonance is such an incredible tool. And it's a great pointer to help you know what matters most to you. For example, let's say you've got a big event coming up and you're out shopping for the perfect outfit and you try on five different dresses and four of them look really great, but there's one of them that just you look at it and you go, oh, that's the one. That's resonance working in your life. When you go to look for a new place to live and you go in and out of 50 million apartments and 18,000 houses until you finally walk into that one place and you just know. Your brain's not telling you, but you just know. It just feels right. That's what resonance is all about. It's the, it's the signpost to get you to know what matters most to you. Because what matters most to you is the building block for this happier, healthier, more fabulous new normal life that you're going to end up creating for yourself. So let's go back to the movie visualization that we ended with in part one. I asked you guys to do some journaling and think about what parts of your life really stood out for you. Which of the things in your past are the ones that resonated with you the most. And I know you've had some time to do the journaling, and now when you look back at it, what surprises you or what stood out about it? Are there any common themes? What did you learn about yourself? What resonated with you the most? And I ask this because the things that resonate are guideposts. For example, for me, I would have automatically picked the picture up there that had the cattails and the grass on it because one of the things that I never expected to happen but did after I was ending treatment was I got into gardening. And it was like it wasn't in, like my brain sat down and said, oh, you're going to go garden. It was just like all of a sudden I'm in Home Depot and I've got this, this cart of flowers there. 
So it's natural that that particular picture would resonate with me. If you had a, if the themes in your visualization that stood out were things like that had a lot of people in them or maybe specific people, that's probably a sign that your new normal life is going to include connection with people, maybe specific people that you, you saw. Perhaps in your visualization there was a lot of places or scenery and that might indicate that um, travel might be in your future or that there are some specific places in nature that would create the most healing for you. But um, those are ways that you can use resonance to start thinking about what's going to be best for you in your no new normal life. And what resonated the most is definitely the starting point for your thinking and choices. I'd like to share with you some words from Hare Lee who has responded to my question of what do you want cancer patients and survivors to know having been there yourself and she sent this information to be included in my book. She said my best advice is to take stock of your life after all the treatments end. Ask yourself where do you want to go? Who do you want to be? With whom do you want your life filled? These are tough questions, but after going through cancer, nothing is really that hard. The answers and implications may be different, but you have to look honestly at your life and take the reins. So I'd like to ask you guys, what do you want more of, less of, to be rid of, to add to your life? What do you want to change? And I have to tell you, if you're like me, that may be a hard question to answer. When I was at the stage of being done with active treatment and starting to, starting to rebuild my new normal life, what I wanted to do was to quit smoking, eat healthier, preferably organic, exercise regularly, do something to get rid of stress, because who knows what made me sick, and I was going to do all of that starting tomorrow, and I was going to do it perfectly, and I was never going to go off track, because I did, would do anything for the cancer not to come back. And I imagine a lot of you guys can relate to that because that fear of it coming back is a big thing and it deserves our attention and no doubt. But I also hope that when you were listening to me, some of you were kind of smiling or maybe even laughing to yourself because as you may have guessed, that did not work out for me. That's why picking one thing is really important. And that's my challenge for you right now is to pick one thing that would make a difference for you if it were to change now. So think about it. Decide which one it might be. Do you have it? Excellent. Congratulations. You've just used resonance to start building your new normal life. And that is the point of step one. So thank you. Step two of our process is permission. And this is probably the biggest challenge that my clients face is this one little word right here. However, in what's next for your life in creating this fabulous new normal, permission, permission to choose to make your own needs as much of a priority as everyone else's are going to be absolutely critical. And I'm going to guess, if you're like most people, when I asked you to pick one thing to change, and then you see these words here up on the screen, there's probably a crazy voice in your head who's screaming something like, putting yourself first is selfish and wrong. I have responsibilities and obligations. People are counting on me. I don't have enough time or money. I've already lost all this time. I need to make it up. I should just accept whatever it is and be grateful that I'm alive. And these are all things that people say to themselves when they start to think about changing. It's just the th things that human beings do. But I want to say to you guys, and I want you to really hear this, if you don't choose to put your own self-care and personal needs on the same level as everybody else in your life, you're significantly jeopardizing your chances of having a healthy, happy, fulfilling, long life. 
everybody needs permission to put their own needs on the equal level with the other people's. So I want to ask you, this is your family here. This is the people who love you. If they were in your position, recovering from cancer, struggling to get your life back, maybe feeling not as normal as you wish you could, what would you expect and want for them? Would you be giving them this hard time beating them up going, you have to do this, gosh, I need this? No. You would want them to take care of themselves. You would give them permission to do that. I'm asking you to give yourself that same permission. And I'd also like to ask you, what do they want for you? Look at them standing there. Do they want you to run yourself ragged trying to get back to normal so you can do all the things you used to do? Or do they want you to take care of yourself and get well so you can be there to grow with them for the rest of your life? And I have to tell you, sometimes they do want you to hurry up and get over it and do what you need to do. They want you to get back and they're not really thinking a whole lot about that you may not be ready. But this is your opportunity to stand up for yourself and say, I know you want me to be better. I know you want me to be back to normal and I do too. But to get there, I have to do this for myself. So that's what I want to challenge you guys to do is to make that commitment to yourself. As we move from step two to step three, I wanted to share with you another quote from my What's Next After Cancer Treatment Ends Life book from Ellen Jacobs. And she says, there is no going back, only finding that new normal. In many ways, cancer is a wake up call that all is not right. It gives us a chance to start fresh with gratitude and embracing this is the first day of the rest of my life and I'm gonna do something good with it. It's a great feeling. And I absolutely believe that this is a feeling that each and every one of you will have. Step three is action, sustainable action. Because how many people do you know who can go out and quit smoking, start exercising, start eating better, and reduce stress, and do it all perfectly, and do it all in one step, all at one time? Oh wait, that was me. It didn't work. <laughs> and what I've learned from myself and from my clients and from just life in general is that there are two things that contribute significantly to sustainable action. The first one is learning to walk through the discomfort of change. Our normal human brains don't like it, but we can learn to walk through it and use it to our advantage. The second thing is learning to consider success and celebrate success for each small step of you take trying to get to where you go, instead of considering success only completion or perfection, which is exactly what I used to do. It seems like the goal of life balance is something that appears to be a solution for us at this point in time. That somehow we can balance fun and recreation and money and family and health and well-being and career and growth into this perfectly shaped pie with all the pieces equal, and if we can somehow make that happen, that we're gonna be healthy, happy. We're gonna have achieved our goal. And I have to tell you guys that that is not true, and it just doesn't work. Nobody will ever have perfectly sliced pies. Some of us don't even like pie. What I have learned, the real definition of balance, and what we're really looking for to create in our lives, is a life in which we feel nourished more than we feel depleted. If we feel nourished most of the time, we are able to make choices and do things that keep building on our health and sustaining our well-being. If we're depleted all the time, we're constantly sucking away, and as we get eventually depleted enough that we get sick. And that is definitely not what we want to have happening going forward. I think you guys will agree with me on that. Here's the good news. Learning to change is like building a muscle. Just like you go to the gym and the first time it hurts and the second time it gets better and after a while all of a sudden you're going, whoa, look at my abs. You know, it's a process and I want you to really hold on to this image of, you know, every time you are trying, whether you fail or whether you don't, 
you're building the muscle and that my friends is part of the success that I want you to celebrate <sighs> living what matters for me when I was diagnosed with cancer was um, not even something that was part of my consciousness using resonance uh, giving myself permission for self-care those were uh, crazy talk and I have to tell you, had I died when I was diagnosed at 37, my life would have been pretty meaningless. I would have, been, have spent it doing what other people thought I should do, what society thought I should do, what I told myself I should be doing because I thought that would make other people like me. And the truth of the matter is, is that none of those things at all were things that I loved doing and things that fed me as a human being. I want you guys to have moments like the ones on the screen here. These are all things that I've done since I became a survivor that I never would have attempted before. The before Cancer Paula had a small life that was based on other people in society. Today, if God forbid I was to get hit by a bus and die, my life would be complete. I would feel like I had mattered, I would feel like I had had a great life, and I would feel like I had made a contribution to the world. And I think that's what all human beings want, is to be able to feel that connection, that contribution, and feel good about themselves. So here's what you need to know about walking through the discomfort of change. Change is not a straight line. It is always a three steps forward, one step back process where we decide we're going to do it, we shut down the crazy woman with the ruler who tells us in our head, the voices in our head that we can't, and we move forward, and we move forward, and then we hit a plateau, and then we get stuck, and then maybe we jump or maybe we go down, but at some point we jump, and the process starts again. And so expecting to go from where you are now to where you want to go in a straight line with no discomfort, no dips, no setbacks. That's just not realistic. The world doesn't work that way. Human beings' brains don't work that way. And truthfully, I don't think we want it to. Because sometimes it's the plateau or the stuck part where the line veers off in a totally different direction that you never would have thought of. And you might have missed it if you just oh, if you had the blinders on and just kept going. So I want you to remember this visual. Change is not a straight line, and when you feel like you're stuck or you're feeling a little paralyzed by it, that's okay. It's part of the change, and what you need to learn to do is to have compassion for yourself and say, oh, wow, look, I was doing so well, and now I'm not. I think this is part of that process of change Paula told me about. I think I'll go do something else that's fun for a little while, and before you know it, you're going to be back on track with everything. It's when you fo folks start to narrow in and focus and angst over what you aren't doing that you lose your momentum and things start to go downhill rather than up. And I have to remind you guys that at each step up and down you take, you need to applaud yourself, yay, and be proud because you are making progress. You are accomplishing your dreams and you are building a new normal life that honors who you are, how you want to be, and what you're going to give to the world. I'd like to recap for you guys now the three essential steps. One is resonance, knowing what matters to you. It doesn't usually come from your brain, it comes from your intuition, it comes from your heart, it comes from things that make you feel good about yourself. Step two, permission. You have to give yourself permission to make your own needs as much of a priority as everyone else's. If you don't have that permission, you're never going to make it all the way to where you want to go, and I want you to go where you want to go. Last but not least, sustainable action. Probably the second most difficult part after permission. Accepting the discomfort as part of the process. Loving yourself when you're not making progress. And celebrating each small step as success. These are the things that are going to build a fabulously wonderful new life for you. And if you have to be, happen to be thinking that there's no way you can do this, I just want to remind you that if you can do cancer, you can do anything. That's my belief, that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. 
I also would like to share with you a few last tools and tips that you can use. And all of this information is going to be available to you in the handout that's going to be available with this webinar. And so you don't have to write them all down, but just look for the ones that resonate with you. Choose to create your new normal life using resonance as a foundation. Give yourself permission and commit to making self-care a priority. Focus on changing one thing at a time. Know where you are in the three-step forward, one-step back process of change. Learn to set boundaries and say no. Practice daily gratitude and self-care. Create, create your own support structure. Celebrate each small step as a success and be willing to step outside of your comfort zone. I'd also like to let you guys know that if what we've been talking about in this two-part webinar resonate with you, you might want to check out my What's Next After Cancer Treatment Ends Life book. It's a guided journal that will take you through the process that I do with my clients to help get you grounded in who you are and what you want to stand for and to get going in creating that new normal life that is based on what matters most to you. You can find it on my website at whatsnextformylife.com. I'd like to close with these words from the life book supplied by Claudia. The uncertainty of tomorrow is what can inspire you to appreciate the here and now. Take a look at all the things you put aside until tomorrow. Call your mom or dad. Make amends with an estranged friend. Spend a long moment holding your child and visualizing every turn in his or her face. Make time to take care of yourself. Tomorrow is another day, but there is no better moment than today to start living. And that's what I want for each and every one of you. I want you to have the opportunity to live fully today because we all know that there's no promise of tomorrow. Thank you so much for being part of the life of this webinar. I've enjoyed spending the time with you. And if you would like to learn more or talk with me at all, you can reach me. Here's my contact information. Y'all have a great, great rest of the day.